Hello everyone and welcome to the 2021 Huck Central presented by Southern Wesleyan University. We're here for the Masters Division, the back half of round number two. And by we, I just mean me and my friends, me and the disc golf guy, one and the same. And we are heading into, like I said, the back half, which starts out on hole number four, 440 feet, slightly uphill, bending from left to right with OB directly behind the pin, probably within 15 to 18 feet. And spoiler alert, Ryan Slim Pickens has the honors after an incredible forehand throw in on the previous hole. And a little stinker it is. Ryan doesn't have that one quite high enough. As you see, he plays through the tunnel up and to the right. PDGA 6840. Barry Schultz. And Barry with the full follow through. Looks like he almost slipped a little bit at the end of the pad. Just trying to get that out and bending from left to right. Third to T is Tim Osten. Tim out of Tennessee. Also fully committed to the uh, <laughs> the twirl at the end. And I'm gonna give my camera guys a little little lighthearted uh, challenge here. Very difficult sometimes to go from these darker areas out into the sky and the sunshine. Trying to find exactly where that finishes. This one we caught and it looks like it's hyzering out. Schultz who just made it out of the clearing through the tunnel I should say. Lays up right next to the pin. He'll have a drop in. Ryan's on the left side. This is going to be uphill. <laughs> you can see he's a little bit stymied with the trees there. And ultimately picks his line. Pretty good control. And this looks like a world of hurt. Just trying to punch out. That was John. And now after actually going deep, it looks like we've got Tim coming back down. <laughs> it sounded like a metal mini that maybe Ryan had dropped. <laughs> Just not getting it to drop is Tim's look at the birdie. Here's John. This is for him to save his par. Wow, incredible work here. Nice uphill putt. I have to assume this has come in as one of the more difficult holes on the course. It's just really tough to get up there for the birdie. And sure enough, in the MP40 division, the Masters division, there were actually... Wow, it, it does not appear that there were any twos. 
There was not a single birdie given up in the MP40 division. So it averaged 0 0.13 over par. All right, now we move over to hole number five. This is a righty backhander's dream. You're just trying to throw it down to the mouth. And then from there, have it maybe skip flare just a little bit. Or if it's gently fading, it should bring itself right to the pin. This average is just a little bit below par. 315 feet at most, you're throwing it with 280, maybe, maybe even less power than a 280-foot oh, shot. Just a little to the right. Let's see if Barry... Yeah, I mean, that, that's pretty much what you're looking to do. Hit the mouth, let the ground play do a little bit of the work for you. It skips up. Of course, he'd love to be a little bit closer, but that's pretty much what you're trying to do. <laughs> and the nervous slash frustrated laugh out of Tim tells me that was lower than he wanted. He still hit the gap, and he still has a good look at birdie, but certainly a little bit lower than he was aiming and you hear John say that that was too high but it looks like it might be the closest one of the group stayed clean fought all the way through he's at least pin high we'll see what Ryan can do here Solid approach shot within 20 feet. Here's one of those putts slightly downhill and can easily get away if you put too much on it. You don't grab any metal. All right, that had the nose up. Good speed. Schultz, he likes it just outside the circle. Schultz moves to six under on the round, opened it at nine down, and now moves to six under on the round. Remember, we saw 11 on the MPO side was hot round <laughs> during round one. So he opened with a nine, and John, who had the best drive of the group, easily walks away with the birdie. I think in future rounds, I'm just going to mic up Ryan and let him do all the commentary for us. A little frustration out of Tim. And these guys are going to move over to hole six. Again, big shout out to Southern Westland University. And hole six is the par four. Now, this is the one hole that's a little bit different than what they played in the morning. Still no Mandos come into play. But this one is a little bit different. They're playing from this shorter tee pad here oh, yeah. as opposed to the long tee pad that they played from earlier in the, in the day. And just real quick on the format, it is four total rounds. They play two on Saturday on the Freightline layouts and then two on Sunday and the Locomotive layout, which has a number of different holes out here.
you see that fading off into the left. There's out of bounds if you get way down into the left. And speaking of down, there's down south dis. Big shout out to Ish. Supporting the coverage, doing a ton of things locally, running a lot of tournaments, offering up supplies and equipment for disc golf. Seems like he's fully committed to the disc golf scene, so make sure you check out some of his tournaments. You can find Down South Dis on Facebook. Here's Tim. And this being the most single most open hole on the entire course, naturally the wind has its greatest effect here. Yeah, and Schultz calling for it to hit one of the legs and it doesn't. And he actually leaks all the way down to the out of bounds. He knew it out of his hands. Another evil chuckle here out of Tim. So that'll still be on the short right side. Just so tough to, I mean, he's trying to throw downhill, also play with the correct angle and then combat the wind. And Ryan's out in the fairway saying, I got this. That is just not enough power short and left. I have to wonder if he just hesitated at the last moment was misjudging that, but significantly short and to the left side. Here's a solid looking approach there by Tim, who was up on the right side. Schultz will bring it in one meter from the out of bounds line. And that really being the first significant mistake as he almost makes up for it with a throw in. But, you know, he missed a few putts on the somewhat shorter side during the front half of the round. But other than that, plays nearly flawless golf up to this point. Nice, solid putt. Ryan likes it. Doing some work to save the par out there on hole six. some of the wind continue. I'm not sure the flag is doing the wind justice, but plenty loud out there. Big shout out to, again, Brian over at Down South Disc. Also a big shout out to Dustin giving us the drone previews and then Dustin and Dylan on the cameras. Downhill, 500 feet, very reachable 500 foot par three. You still have to have plenty of power, but I think there's a lot of people that 
love the idea of telling others that they parked a 500 foot shot. There's OB short, which is a creek line. And then also off to the left side on this hole. And I think that's where we just saw John. downhill just a little bit. And sure enough, there's out of bounds on that right hand side and that's exactly where Tim finds himself. Schultz pushing left side out of bounds and somehow stays clear of it. Of course, we're here at the Grand Central Station Disc Golf Course, the locomotive line, the freight line, the two courses that are named out here for the two configurations. I think I've already spoiled the potential trivia question as to why it's called Central South Carolina, even though it's up in what they call upstate South Carolina. It, with regards to the railroad, it was the halfway point, or is still, I guess it just wasn't, but it still is, the halfway point between Atlanta and Charlotte. So they just called it the central point, and hence Central South Carolina. located in upstate northwestern South Carolina. I don't know why anybody would be confused. Let's see if Schultz has any of that forehand magic. Oh, it looks like just a pitch near the pin. Hole seven coming in as the third most difficult hole on the course for our MP40 division, averaging 3.25 on the day. trying to time it just right. Looks like his putter is heating up. Nice save for par. And with the Penalty stroke. Ryan is going to, or correction, sorry, Tim is going to take the double bogey. John, on the other hand, is going to take a single bogey. And that's it for open holes, at least for a little while. I think until they get over to hole number nine, perhaps. Big shout out to Tony Boyko and Sail On Enterprises, big supporter of all the uh, work done on the Disc Golf Guy channel. Here's hole eight. A little bit tight off the tee, and then that should bring you up just short of the OB Creek, the same one that r runs along hole seven. Also back on hole 15 and 16, and could maybe come into play on 14, but. You want to come up just short of the creek, and you're going to pitch up and over to the uphill sloped green. Hopefully, walk away with a birdie. This one's averaging under par. 
But you need to be in position after this tee shot. And be okay, I think. We'll have to see about that. That's pushed a little bit left. Schultz a little frustrated with missing his line. We'll see if he's pinched up on that left side. That looks like it might have had a little too much on it. Or, yeah, you could do exactly what Tim's done there. That is prime position. Schultz, truly the patent pending originator there. Throwing to the base of the hill. You have a long uphill look at birdie. Little side note, Barry, arguably one of the best to ever throw that patent pending shot. Largely comes from the fact that he wasn't really proficient in his forehands for quite a few years. So in some instances where maybe you'd want a shot to bend from left to right, he would instead step out with his back to the hole and have a little more comfort there. Now, of course, sometimes that's not applicable. Sometimes you really need the skip or the, the shaping of a forehand and such, but putting your back to the hole like that gives you a few more options, especially if you got some longer legs like Barry does. Seemed like a root there. <laughs> May have prevented him from skipping up right underneath the pin, but he still has a good luck. Ryan's putter feels like it's been heating up. Can he keep it going? There's a jinx if I've ever heard one. John is uphill. Doesn't appear that logs in his swing. Well, doesn't. Nothing seems to phase him there. Great birdie. I believe John started the round at four under par, as was Ryan. So you see John two over for the round, Ryan two under for the round right now. Left. <laughs> uh, he's exactly right. It was a great looking up shot. And then kicks something to the left. And I don't know if we have a counter on the frustrated eagle evil laugh <laughs> coming out of Tim here this round. I feel you. Let's see if he can still convert here on the slight straddle. Oh, well, come on. Beautiful. As he said, he's got to work for it. As the rest of them clear out, we move on, pick up some double G jerky. Crack pepper is the latest flavor offered, bringing his total flavors to five different kinds. Hole nine is as straightforward as it gets, 280 feet. You are playing from the mouth of this gap here. So any wind that's coming in, you should be able to feel and see pretty quickly. But this is straightforward. This is when you just have to go out and get. Averaging 0.25 under par, surprisingly not in the top three or four for easiest. It still is on the easier spectrum, but
Ryan tracking right to the pin. Very little effort required from there. <laughs> Talking about the, what I believe is the lead card on the MPO side is nearby. And some gallery was applauding just as these guys were getting ready on a adjacent hole. Here's John making it look easy. <laughs> There's the evil laugh again. Now it's making me laugh just hearing it. He just wants a lull in the wind. Hi, top band. Schultz from just short. Wow, and Schultz wondering about a little awkward wind, maybe a misread or something, or it just simply didn't react the way he was anticipating. And normally you wouldn't see some of our top professionals taking their time on relatively short routine putts but just trying to look for a little break in that wind using their time allotted schultz had hit off the front of the rim Schultz with his own episode of Myth Mythbusters there, trying to figure out what what took place. But Pastry Dyes, big shout out. Dylan doing some work. Find them on pastrydyes.com. Some of the most vibrant discs and designs you'll find anywhere in disc golf. And hole 10, the blind, slightly downhill, 320 feet. Heiser's usually the play for the righty backhander. And you can see the wind just pushing hard left to right. But once it gets down, finds the hillside there, you, you see a lot of them either skip or sometimes roll right over to the pin. And that is a difficult angle. Kind of surprised to see Ryan go that with that approach. And when you're on the pin, or uh, correction, when you're on the tee, you have no idea just how good or not any given shot is. I mean, other than what you practice and what you think you threw, but you cannot see that land. Good shot. Wow, and like what well, looked like splitting <laughs> a couple of the low bushes right up the middle. Good approach shot there by Ryan. Feels like Tim has been just about everywhere on the basket. He's had a few of them that have been good, solid chain. Not enough that 
I, I think they should have fallen in, so to speak, but certainly hitting some good chain and just a bit off of center. And that's a little bit heartbreaking, or a lot, if you are John. Just got up and rolled away. Now he's got some work to do to try and save the par. I'm quite shocked to see that hole 10 averaged 3.13 for the round. That's very surprising to me. I, I assume that would be closer to par or below. So Ryan and Tim are in for their pars. John's going to have the bogey and Schultz with the lone birdie. He pushes to 16 under. That's seven under on the round with just a couple of holes left to play. As I mentioned, the tap in for bogey by John. Just 11 and 12 left during this round of our Round two, MP40 Masters card coverage. Fortunately, they've got this par four, 580 feet. You're trying just to throw to the mouth of the tunnel there. You want to hit that gap or come up just short of it. You need to be in line with it so that you could potentially throw it on the tunnel. Schultz asking for it to land softly and not carry past. Oh, too much. Man. <laughs> and that, that's one of the main that's dangers. The the <laughs> Is oh, you throw it too hard and you're going to go past the gap, or you try and bite off too much, maybe you turn it over and you find yourself on that short right side. That is the one place you cannot be. That'll nice work. He'll be looking down the gap. We'll see if that leaked a little too far left. It looks like it did. But that is a solid recovery shot. Not quite enough to get him in putting range, but from there he should have an easy layup if he wants it. <laughs> Schultz calling for the tree kick. Doesn't get it. And this is what I mean. If you don't land right at the mouth, you may waste a shot just getting up to it. And that's exactly what we just saw. Great discipline out of Ryan. Not trying to make a big recovery shot. He basically said, hey, I'm going to throw it right into position where I need to make my third shot and hope to get up and down and walk away with a par still. So at this point, he's got at least 300 feet to the pin. And that's going to be short and dangerous for a putt. Ryan saying, well, I'm going to take my medicine, walk away from here with a bogey. I don't want to turn it into a double or a triple bogey. So I'll just lay it up next to the pin and 
have to be content with that. If I haven't said it, Brian Shop and Todd Lyon are tournament directors. Great guys, along with Dustin, who helped provide the drone previews. Down South Disc, that is ish. Running events as well and offering up amateur merchandise and all your disc golf needs. You can find them on Facebook. And then Dustin and Dylan, the two cameramen out there hustling around, getting multiple rounds each day just so you guys have some sweet coverage coming to you from Huck Central. Just the somber tap-in bogey. Is a solid par after doing some work. Schultz remains at 16 under. I think that's seven under for the round. Another big shout out to Upstate Disc Golf Club. And our final hole of round number two, hopefully finishing on a high note, 235 uphill and to the left. Place probably closer to 250, maybe 260. You got to beat that tree. I think I've heard it called the Medusa tree. Seems pretty appropriate. If you beat that, you're all but guaranteed a good look at a birdie. Well, okay. You beat that, you skip next, right next to the pin. And, and really, I think back to his first hole of the round, he was about that far away to open with back-to-back -back holes 13 and 14, and he's gonna close it out with a good birdie putt. Good luck. John, almost as close. Of course, I gotta ask you guys, like, share, subscribe, do all that YouTube stuff. And then also leave a comment Trying to run out of clever things for you guys to comment on. There it is. So here, here's my comment for you. Or what I would ask, I should say, is uh, who, who's your local? Who's your local super pro? Again, I grew up watching, getting beat by Barry Schultz week in and week out as he's gone on to be one of the best players of all time. He eventually moved down to the Carolinas about a decade ago and clearly still one of the best players of all time and battling and just an incredible competitor. So I'd like to know who's your local super pro. Maybe it's someone we've heard of. Maybe it's someone we haven't, but that's what I want to know. Put that in the comments. As the... Ryan Slim Pickens picks up a birdie to finish. Dare we close out on a star frame? Oh, it's looking pretty darn good. Again, thank you guys for joining. This is all we'll see of the MP40 division. I have more action, both single and double camera coverage of some MPOs as we head into rounds two, three, and four for the MPO divisions. Thank you guys so much. And Barry giving the shout out to the camera guys, Dylan and Dustin, who did a great job. We appreciate it. And there's uh, what it looks like right now. Through Halfway through, Schultz has a commanding nine stroke advantage. Spoiler alert, folks, he'd go on to have the hottest score out of all players in the entire tournament. And that's all we've got for you guys. I want to say thank you yet again as we're here at Huck Central, presented by Southern Wesleyan University.